7. Lamentations 3. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Beginning with the 48th verse, we'll read responsibly through verse 55. And the text verse is the 51st verse. Lamentations 3, 48 through 55, page 837. And let's stand, please, for the reading of this passage. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mine eye trickleth down and ceaseth not without any intermission till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. Mine eye affecteth mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed over mine head. Then I said, I am cut off. I call upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Let's pray. And Lord, we pray that you'd use your word in a way that would affect our hearts, our lives. Now, in order for that to be accomplished, there has to be a preacher, and we've got a preacher. Thank you for him. And there have to be there has to be those who listen and who will listen in earnestness. I pray that you'd help us to do that, each one of us here, and bless with thy spirit's power, help today in this evening's service. In Jesus' name, amen. My text is the same as my title of my message tonight. It comes from Lamentation 351, simply five words. Mine eye affecteth mine heart. Mine eye affecteth mine heart. Our Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that you'd help us to straighten our eyes up and get our eyes right with God. Bless, I pray, tonight. And may, as I preach, would you convey the love of my heart to the people to whom I speak tonight because I'll speak in some cases rather abruptly, because I want to emphasize the danger that we face. Bless the service, please. Amen. The devil is destroying America, and much of that destruction <clears throat> he's using the lust of the eye with which to do it. The compromisers love to say that the outside is not important and that the heart is all that matters. But the Bible says, mine eye affected mine heart. Whether you believe it or not, and by the way, the compromisers are simply, are simply using as a smoke screen <clears throat> that little deal about it, only the heart matters. My Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven, that they may see, that they may see your good works. And so there's nothing today quite as dangerous in fundamental circles and by the way, I'll make it very plain. If a person is not right on convictions, he's not a fundamentalist. He may call himself a fundamentalist, but he's not a fundamentalist. If you're, if you're a Hollywood movie watcher, then you're not a fundamentalist. Preacher doesn't preach against mixed bathing is not a fundamentalist. Fundamentalism is more than believing just a few of the basic doctrines of the Bible. It's also believing in the life we're supposed to live. And the devil not only has given us things before our eyes with which to destroy our civilization, but then he's hushed the preachers in America about the things that we look at that destroy our nation. Here is a direct contradiction to that philosophy. Mine eyes affecteth mine heart. 
Job was wise in Job 31.1 when he said he made a covenant with his eyes. One of the finest things that you could do for the new year is to make a covenant with your eyes. You make a covenant that your eyes are not going to behold that which they should not behold. You make a covenant with your eyes that they're not going to watch evil things on the television set. <coughs> you make a covenant with your eyes that you're not going to watch any Hollywood movie, whether you go there or they come to you. By the way, they don't come alone to you, by the way. You make a covenant with your eyes, young men, that you're not going to be a woman gazer in 1990. You make a covenant with your eyes. Jesus saw the possibility of the eye destroying one in Matthew 5, 29, when he said, If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. He said, If you have an eye that bothers you, pluck it out. There are several places in the Bible, and I could take weeks in preaching on this one subject, about where the eye affecteth the heart. When Satan tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, it was not through touch. It was not through smell. It was not through sound or even taste. It was through her eyes. Genesis 3 6 she saw that the that that the that the that it was good for food She saw that it was good for food and the entire human race fell Because Eve saw it was good for food I'm saying that the devil made his temptation look good and the devil always makes sin look good He's a dirty liar And he makes it look good I wish that advertise, put the true advertisement on the television screens and the newspapers and the magazines. Instead of putting some beautiful woman who is smoking cigarettes on um, in all their advertisements, I want to take a picture of someone dying in cancer, with cancer in a hospital and put on their advertisements. Instead of putting some uh, handsome man or good-looking woman drinking liquor and showing that, <coughs> that the smart set drinks liquor won't they put somebody dying on a highway just been struck by a drunken driver well they put little orphan children orphaned because of liquor won't they put the real truth and they'll tell the real story tell you why because the devil wants to make it look good but he can make it look good all he wants to it's as rotten as the devil and inside it's a cancer and filth so the whole human race fell because the devil used the eye Mine eye, Eve could have said, affecteth mine heart. When Lot and his wife were fleeing Sodom, the Bible says in Genesis 19, 26, that Mrs. Lot looked back. That's all. Seems like, like, like such an insignificant thing for her just to look back. But she looked back, and her whole life was wrecked and ruined. Not only that, but because she looked back, her husband had uh, immorality, committed immorality with his two daughters, <coughs> and two heathen sons were born named Ammon and Moab, and, 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 and uh, trouble was in the Holy Land from that day until this because one woman looked back. She looked back. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't look back. Don't look back. The Bible says in Luke 9, 62, he that putteth his hand to the plow and looketh back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. Now, what does that mean? That means when you come to you, the plow is your next step in life. And when you come to the next step in your life and you put your hand to the plow and then you look back to the past step in life and you look back, you'll want to go back where you came from. Because, because uh, uh, <coughs> um, it always looks better as you look back than it did while you were there. Don't look back. Don't do it. When I came to Hammond 30 years ago, for 16 months, I looked back. I looked back to Texas. I'd sit on this platform up here, and I would, um, I would uh, think about the church in Texas. I wanted to go back to Texas. I looked back. And after 16 months, I got on an airplane. I flew to Texas, 
I borrowed a key to the auditorium of the church I used to pastor. I went in the pulpit and knelt behind that pulpit and said, Dear God, tonight I'm burying the Miller Road Baptist Church of Garland, Texas. Some of you young people are going to destroy your lives because you're looking back right now. And you're going to go back home after the first semester, and what you're doing is you're looking back. And the Bible says you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. It means you're not fit to be a servant of God. That's what it means. You're not fit to serve in the kingdom of God. Why? Because you're not supposed to look back. Now, you look back and you'll go back. Now, quit looking back and quit looking backward and quit. It always will. And don't look back to the old life. The old life always looks better as you look back than it did while you were in it. And you look back, and, and you want to go back. And so what happened? Uh, Lot's wife uh, looked back. She became a pillar of salt. And uh, her life was ruined. And, and her, her uh, children and grandchildren, and her, uh, they founded an entire race because of it, because she looked back. Now, you listen to me, and you listen well. Don't look back. You folks that used to go to the taverns and God saved you, don't look back. Don't even look at the tavern. Drive around the block to miss it. Don't look back. You folks that used to go to movies and and uh, and, and now you you look but don't look back don't look back and uh, you folks that are, have come to go to college and you're preparing yourself for your future don't look back anybody can turn back anybody can look back don't look back don't look back my eyes affected my heart listen the best friends you've got in this world tonight is this preacher right now don't you look back but I'm homesick well don't look back and you won't know it don't look back. Mine eyes affected my heart. Now then, when David took an unwise day off, he, it says in 2 Samuel 11, 2, he saw a woman. Mine eyes affected my heart. This generation has been destroyed by what 1 John 2, 16 calls the lust of the eye. The Playboy philosophy, the magazine, the movies, the TVs, the videos, the immodest dress, and all of it have helped with the destruction of the morals of America. Somebody said, Brother House, why uh, one marriage out of every two ends in divorce? I'll guarantee you the main reason is it's the playboy philosophy. It's what we look at. It's, what we, it's the way our ladies dress. It's what you watch on television. And there's, it's time for God's people to act like God's people. It's time for God's people to look at things that God's people ought to look at. It's time for, for God's people to turn that stupid box off unless there's something, uh, when there's something indecent to watch. It's time, listen to me, it's time, I'm not kidding either. It's time for you to quit watching the primetime garbage on television. And it's time for you to quit watching the soap operas on television. And it's time for you to quit. When you say, oh, for the, I watch the good thing. Listen, I'll guarantee you, in fact, every show you'll see, somebody's kissing somebody he's not married to. My eyes affecteth my heart, and you're not going to watch the soap operas without your heart being affected. You're not going to watch the primetime TV without your heart being affected. And you're not going to watch those little movies that you go up to video place and rent and bring them home and put in that wicked thing you got there and show movies in your house. It's godless, and it's going to destroy your heart. Why? Because my eyes affecteth my heart. And by the way, you know I'm telling you the truth tonight. You know I'm telling you the truth. Everybody's got any sense in this room knows I'm telling you the truth. We're being destroyed by death the devil using our eyes. Now, you listen to me. You are not going to participate in, the, in, in succumbing to the temptation to look at things you ought not to look at and stay pure. You're not going to do it. Every young lady in this house, and I've said this a hundred times, every young lady in this house who's not married ought to have one great goal as far as your life is concerned. You ought to have a goal that when that lady there or some other plays that organ, the wedding march, and I'm standing up here, and you're on the arm of your father coming out that door and down those stairs and across and down this center aisle, and there waits for you a young man there and extends his arm, and God's choice for you is waiting for you. Every single young lady in this room ought to be able to look up and say to him, I'm clean, I'm pure, I've saved myself for you, I'm chaste, I'm virgin, and I'm clean. Well, you say over the high, that's old fogey. Well, we need some old fogey people in America. Our country in the old fogey days is better off. The old fogey days, we, did, we had patriotism. 
The old foggy days, liquor was outlawed. The old foggy days, no, no man would curse in front of a woman. The old foggy days, women wore modest clothing. The old foggy days, men got haircuts. I'm saying we need some old foggy Christians, some old foggy convictions, some old foggy preaching, some old foggy holy living, some old foggy, foggy standards. I'm saying you walk down the aisle and that young man extends his arm to you, you ought to be able to look at him and say, I've saved myself. This is me. You say, that's what I want. You won't get that way watching these primetime TV shows. You won't do it. You won't get that way watching these shows where a bunch of gals showing their thighs and the bosoms almost on television. You won't get clean. You won't stay clean. No, you won't. No, you won't. You say, oh, the house it doesn't affect me. Then you ought to go to the doctor and have a checkup. Or go to San Francisco. And there's nothing wrong, couldn't be cured by a generation of preachers having the gumption to stand up and preach like I'm preaching right now. Now, the honest, simple truth is, every young man in this room, and I'm talking, and by the way, I'm not kidding right now. You may laugh after a while, but I'm not laughing right now. Every young man in this room ought to so live that when he walks out that door and stands here beside the pastor, and the, and the pastor says, who, giveth the, who gives the bride away? He walks, walk, walks down there and extends his arm to that young lady. He ought to be able to look at her in the eye and say, I saved myself for you. I'm pure. I'm decent. And by the way, every single mom and dad who has a little child sitting beside you tonight or a child in the nursery ought to thank God you go to a church where it's preaching like this goes from the pulpit. You ought to thank God for it. You go off and join some of these little pussyfoot, near tickling, back scratching, penny pinching, nickel nipping, soft soaping, pink limited pussyfooters churches because you don't believe our conviction. You better thank God you got somebody trying to keep your children pure and chaste and decent. I'm saying, but you say, Brother House, it's impossible for a young man to stay pure in 1990. You're a liar. It is not impossible. But it is impossible if you're going to sit there and watch that boob tube. It is impossible if you're going to watch, read those magazines. And by the way, it's impossible even nowadays if you read catalogs. I mean, the average Sears Roebuck catalog, a Montgomery Ward catalog, or J.C. Penney catalog, nothing more than an than a old-fashioned Playboy magazine. But I, I want to serve notice a young man can have a pure mind. I want to serve notice a young man can have a clean life. I want to serve notice. You can walk the aisle clean. You can walk the aisle pure. You can walk the aisle virgin. You can walk the aisle chaste, but you're not going to do it unless you make a covenant with your eyes to watch only that which you ought to watch. You're not going to do it. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. At the window I looked, young man said. I looked. At the window I looked. Now, I'll say something. It is tough these days when you females love to show your legs to everybody in the country, love to wear a low-cut dress to show your bosom, or wear a tight sweater so everybody can see exactly how you are shaped. And you walk down the street, and every young man has to almost wear, uh, wear uh, put halters over his eyes or blinders over his eyes. It is pretty tough, but, fellas, it can be done. But in God's name, young ladies, make it easy for them. I don't care what you say. I don't care if everybody gets up and walks out of this church. I don't care if I'm here preaching to nobody in this building. I am going to preach the fact that ladies ought to dress modestly. And every red-blooded American male in this room tonight knows exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I can't say you ladies know what I'm talking about because I've never been a lady. So, some of you fellows have or are, but I've never been one. But I'll tell you what, every man in this room tonight who's normal knows I'm telling you the truth. You know it's time for ladies to wear decent link dresses and quit being poured into a pair of pants and quit wearing a bunch of shorts around and around. He's in the house, I, I just want to stay cool. Now listen to me, listen to me. I saw a lady, sorry, pardon me, a female the other day. It was 20 degrees outside. She was wearing shorts and from here up she had on a fur coat. Now, why was she wearing those shorts? She's trying to keep cool, and she was. Now, you listen to me. Say what you want to say, but I'm not going to come back here anymore. Well, you're going to get the truth while you're walking out then. I mean, I'm simply saying 
that it's time God's people made a covenant with our eyes. My eye affecteth my heart, the Bible said. This young man at the window, he was watching the women, watching women go by. Did you know, you said, Brother House, how can you help but watch the women? Try a book. Try reading something decent. And so this young man, simple one, unfolded one, the Bible says, a virgin, he saw this female walking. He looked out his window and he saw her. And this woman watcher saw her. Bible says in Genesis 6, 2, when Ham saw the nakedness of his father. Proverbs 23, 33, Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Esther 1, 11, <coughs> the queen was fair to look upon. When the king had this drunken feast and uh, he had all these big politicians, thousands of them from all over the kingdom to come in, he asked his wife Vashti if she would come and she'd have a little strip tease and show them how pretty she was. And she said, I won't do it. And I want to say this right here too. You're not supposed to obey her, your husband when he tells you to disobey God. I had a man walk in my office who attended this church. He doesn't anymore, not after that day. He walked in my office and he said, Brother Hiles, I want you to talk to my wife. She doesn't obey me. And I said, well, what's trouble? <coughs> he said, he said, I like to see my wife making love to other men. And I have commanded her to do it. You need to talk to her and cause her to obey me. And I said, you sorry rascal, you, you're not fit to have a decent woman. And when, when, when Vashti said to the king, her husband, I'll not strip down and, and, be a, and, and, and give my body for display to a bunch of lustful, the eyes of lustful men, I'll not do it. She had every right in the world to say that. Now you listen. You young ladies, it's time that, now you don't like your preaching. Well, just lump it, but, but, but it's time you listen to it. It's time you stop to realize that, that look, the reason you wear those shorts is to show your legs. You know that's the truth. That's why you go mixed bathing. I mean, the honest, simple, I was down in Nassau. And I'll tell you, the whole world is a flesh pot. I mean, the whole world. And, we, and, and the, devil, the devil has destroyed the morals of America. He's destroyed the homes of America. He's destroyed the decency of America. And he's done it with magazines and television programs and posters and newspapers and catalogs and all the filth and garbage he can put and cause young men to have evil thoughts. Look, what they ought to do. Every time they, they, they put a man in jail for rape, put the fellow that published the magazine right beside him. Let Hugh Hefner go to jail. I mean, let his daughter that runs that empire now, let her go to jail. Mine eyes affecteth mine heart, and so do yours. Your eyes affect your heart. David looked out the window. He saw a beautiful woman bathing on the housetop next door. The first place, that's the best thing for you to do, fellas, is keep busy. If David had been out where he was supposed to be, he wouldn't have been looking out the window at the woman bathing next door. And the second place, if he looked out the window and saw that woman bathing next door, the best thing for him to do is run as fast as he can away. Take off. Just take off. Now listen to me. Listen. Our countries, de listen, if, if I had a child growing up in this generation, I'd want him to hear preaching like this more than most anything I know of. Instead of getting your little feelings hurt, and by the way, the ones that do it usually, the wife, because the husband, two, two things, the wife usually in a case like that decides whether they get man leave or not. Little Oswald's afraid to speak up. She says, come on, we're going somewhere else. And he says, yes, ma'am. God give us a man. And secondly, she does it 
because she wants her daughter to show her legs in public, and she wants, this. I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, 90% of the people that get mad at my preaching and leave this church have teenage children. You know why? Because they get tired of fighting the child and the, and, and the battle for the child to obey the rules. Won't you decide to be head of your house? When our kids got 13 years of age, 13 years of age, I had a talk with each one of them. I'll use Becky first. She was the first one who got 13. The oldest one is usually the one who gets 13 the first. <laughs> and I sat down and had a talk with her, like I had all four of them. I said, now, Becky, I want to tell you something. You're a teenager. You will live by, by the rules that your mom and dad sit down. Of course, dad sat down most of them with mother's permission. I don't understand you, I don't understand you fellas. I really don't. I really don't. Well, I'm afraid she'd leave me. Well, I'd rather be a left man than a kept mouse. I told our kids, look, some of you guys, why don't you ask your wife if you can say amen? You, you'd feel good if you did. I said, I said to Becky, I, you just love to see me get in trouble, don't you? You love it. You love it. I said, now, Becky, I'll tell you something. There's some rules in this house. Now, we will feed you, and we will clothe you, and we will give you a place to stay. Now, those are the assets. Now, I said there's some liabilities and responsibilities. And no, no asset ought to come without responsibility. That's one thing wrong with the lottery. One of the, one of the many things wrong with the lotteries. It's a, we want assets without responsibilities. We want money without work. But I'm going to tell you after a while what I said to my kids. Uh, Every time I, I, I get to telling it, I see some woman punching her husband doing like that. <laughs> Notice I didn't say lady. Some of you guys are scared to death. Even me saying it, it scares you, doesn't it? Now, wait a minute. I said to Becky, there are some responsibilities. You will live by our rules. Now, I said adults make their own rules but I said as long as you live in this house you'll abide by the rules set up by your mom and dad now if you get to the place where you don't, don't abide with those rules we won't argue with you we won't fuss you will become an adult if you're 16 years of age and you won't live you won't get home when we say get home and by the way I've broken up many a party at 11 o'clock because 11 o'clock was getting home time. I've gotten in my car quite often in years gone by and gone to a party to get our child who was five minutes late getting home. You say, you're a tyrant. That's a pretty good explanation. Now, I'm going to tell you what I told my daughter when she's 13. I said... <coughs> <laughs> if you get the place before you're 18 and leave our home where you will not obey our rules, then at uh, that moment you become an adult. Now, I won't fuss with you, but you'll become an adult. And you will provide your own food and your own clothing and your own shelter. And, and I will help you. I won't, I won't, I'll help you pack and you'll become an adult. And I said that you'll be as welcome as any other adult would be. I want you to come home for special days, come home for Christmas, <coughs> and act like any, any other adult would act. But I said, that's when you become an adult. Now, it's time that some of you parents decided that, that your kids have a privilege and opportunity living with you. Well, you said, Brother Hiles, what would you have done if they wouldn't have kept your rules? I'd have helped them pack. Yeah, and by the way, if your kids thought you'd help them pack too, <laughs> you'd be amazed how much they'd better they'd obey you. 
So, I told, I told all of them that. Now, by the way, I say this too. If a child decides to become a, say a child, if you decide that you're going to stay home after 18, I don't care if you're 35 years old. If your dad, if your mommy and your daddy are providing for you and providing a place for you to live and food for you to eat and your clothing, then you're still a child. And you're supposed to abide by their rules. So I, I'm simply saying that, that it's time that we decided our kids are not going to watch the things that are destroying them. What you say, brother, what are you saying? Well, let me just put the jelly on the bottom shelf. Uh, when, that, when, that, when, when, when a woman comes on wearing shorts or a woman comes on with a plunging neckline or, uh, or some, some uh, a program, the, 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 the set's got a knob. It says on and off. Off means it gets black. Turn it off. Oh, you say, brother, how we'd have war around our house. That's a wonderful thing to have. It ought not to be the parents worried about the war. It ought to be the kids worried about the war. Old Dr. Bill Rice used to say that he had a sermon called Love Them, Lick Them, and Learn Them. Folks are intelligent enough to know that's bad English. You should laugh at that. Love Them, Lick Them, and Learn Them. Thank you. And he said, somebody said to me, why, he said, if my dad had treated you like your dad, if he'd be like your dad treated you, I'd have hated my dad. And Dr. Bill said, if you'd have had my dad, you wouldn't have hated anybody in the whole world. You'd be begging for peace. Now listen. Mom and dad ought to decide what Susie wears. I don't mean dad goes down and pick out, picks out the dress. <clears throat> I mean, they ought to decide what style Susie wears. Mom and dad ought to decide what length the dress is. Mom and dad ought to decide how long or how short Johnny's hair is. Now, if Johnny's gone, that's not your business. If Johnny's at home, it is your business. And you ought to decide when he gets a haircut, what kind of haircut he gets. Well, you said, well, the house, if I did that, my kids would rebel. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'd rather be a man with rebellious kids than be a mouse with a... All across America where I go, here's what I see. I see coming... In, you know what I'm going to say yet, Stan. Uh, all across America. But keep on, you're doing well. But, but all across America, here's what I see. I'll be sitting on the platform here, and I will see a nice looking lady walk in, middle aged lady. She'll have a Bible under her arm like this and a purse on the other arm with a modest length skirt and a modest dress and a sweet Christian look on her face. And right behind her comes a couple of stilts with a blouse on. And here comes this teenage female who lives in that home, same home with that woman. Same female, and she comes in after her, showing her thighs, showing her knees, and right behind that comes a very nice-looking middle-aged man. He has on a business suit. He has a nice short haircut, and right behind him comes a guy like this. That's my boy, and he's still at home. I'd whack him on the back and say, Straighten up! <laughs> well, you say to the house, that there's a generation gap. Doesn't have to be. We've got to be a generation saps. Don't need to have a generation gap. My eyes affecteth my heart and the magazines are killed. I, look. I'll just go ahead and say it. I'm talking about Seventeen magazine. I'm talking about Cosmopolitan magazine. I'm talking, talking about Ladies Home Journal magazine. I'm talking about, let's just go ahead and say it, I'm talking about Sports Illustrated magazine. Boy, that sort of trimmed it down, didn't it? Yeah. Brother, when they put out that first bathing suit issue, that's the last one Howell's going to buy and I cancel my subscription. Won't you be? Won't you have courage and get Playboy instead and fa and 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 put me in a, a little sly hypocrite? 
You say, Brother Hiles. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, aren't we supposed to like women in bathing suits? That's the whole issue. My eyes. Look, I'm 63, but I'm not dead. When David took an unwise day off, his whole life was destroyed. Kingdom began to crumble. He saw. He saw. I contend that there can be pure-minded men. But they also, <coughs> if they're <coughs> pure-minded, they're also disciplined-eyed. When Lot saw the well-watered plains toward Sodom in Genesis 13, 10, he pitched his tent toward Sodom. He saw it. Nothing is destroying America any more than lust for houses. He saw the well-watered plain <coughs> toward Sodom. I want to tell you something. Debt, 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 debt is just choking our nation because we're living in houses we can't afford. Did you know that, I'm, I'm going to teach you something real brilliant now. You might want to take a note on this or at least put it in your mind. Did you know it doesn't matter how many rooms you got in the house, you can't be in but one room at a time? And you know when you get that next house you want, you're going to look at another one that's better than that one and want that one too? And when you get that one, you're going to look at the next one. Why don't you just stay where you are? Proverbs 27, 20, the eyes of a man are never satisfied. If you decide what you buy on the basis of advertisement, you'll never be satisfied. Because there's always the next something you don't have. So I'm simply saying, <coughs> quit looking. <coughs> quit driving around the rich neighborhoods. Go home and thank God you got a roof and a wall. Quit looking. Now, we live in a lovely home. We didn't build it. You bought, your church built it before we came here. I'll guarantee you one thing. Never, there never was a carpet that made a home. And no furniture ever made a home. And no pretty living room ever made a home. And no pretty entrance hall ever made a home. And no pretty furnishings ever made a home. And no pretty bedroom ever made a home. And no pretty parlor ever made a home. <coughs> when Lot saw... And when Lot saw the well-watered plains toward Sodom, two wild, wild generations were born. <laughs> we had a couple come here not long ago on a Sunday morning and moved in this area. They came here on a Sunday morning, and boy, they loved it. Because I preached something real sweet and kind. And, and that night, the real Jack Howe stood up. <laughs> and I saw them later, and they said, which, which Jack Howe's is the real one? I said both of them. That his Sunday used to say, you can't love flowers unless you hate weeds. And you can't, you, you doctors here, you can't love health unless you hate germs. And you can't love God unless you hate the sin that nailed his son to the cross. It's time we quit looking. Looking. Ask the, that couple <coughs> who lived out in Munster. They had a home. It was an outside doesn't look too imposing. They said in the inside the thing was unreal. Ask them, those that couple that got murdered a few weeks ago, if it matters what size of house you live in. And I'll guarantee you, I'm, I'm not against you buying a new house. I'm not against it at all. But I'm saying this, I'm saying, when you get it, be satisfied with it. Mine eyes affecteth my heart. Advertising is destroying our, our country. I refuse to look at billboards. I refuse to look at commercials. <coughs> Don't listen to commercials. I'll decide what I buy. I won't let some little, little uh, 
television commercial with some little uh, uh, comedy character, let me decide what I buy. I'll decide what I buy. Now, and I won't let some, some guy uh, uh, with long hippie hair uh, wearing a certain kind of an outfit tell me what to buy. No way. I mean, my eye, affect, my eye affected my heart. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. When Achan saw, God said to Joshua, <coughs> you take over Jericho. <coughs> he said, Jericho's mine. The spoils of Jericho belong to me. In Joshua 7:21. Achan said, I saw among the spoils of Jericho. I'm glad he called it spoils because everything this world's got to offer is spoiled. He said, my wife would like to have that coat. And I've got this, some, this some money right here. <coughs> I see. I think I'll take it. And he took it. And there are three little statements. I saw, I coveted, I took. He wouldn't have taken if he hadn't coveted. He wouldn't have coveted if he hadn't have seen. Young people, I don't have any hope at all for you to live by this, but it'd help you if you did. Don't go window shopping. You'll want to buy some windows. <laughs> Just don't do it. And when you get these, <coughs> these uh, catalogs that they send you in the mail first every month, Throw them in, ladies, throw them in the garbage can quickly because you will see and you'll want. But why didn't somebody tell young ladies that dresses don't make you pretty? Why didn't somebody tell some young ladies that an innocent look in your eyes what makes you pretty? And a blush on your face what makes you pretty? And a modest appearance makes you pretty? And that doesn't wash off. I'm saying, <coughs> don't read the catalogs. Don't watch the commercials. Don't go window shopping. Make a covenant with your eyes that you're not going to let, let your eyes and the lust of your eyes, and that doesn't mean just sex, that means desires. The lust of the eyes control you. And don't you let advertisers control you. And don't you let... Ho you know what I think? <coughs> I think it's time that God's people quit worrying about how Paris dresses. You go to Paris sometime. There are animals over there. Don't let them determine how you dress. Oh, but Brother Hiles, I, I want to wear the, the latest... Uh, can you think of any? Uh, jocks. Uh, What's some kind of a, can't think of any all of a sudden. I got, I got some socks here. Got a, <laughs> a Christian Dior, yeah. <laughs> if, I'm gonna wear, if you're going to wear stuff like that, at least wear some that come from Christians. <laughs> of course, I misspelled the word deer, but, but Christian deer, a dear Christian. The reason they misspell the word dear, they're made by fundamentalists. <laughs> now, what's the latest thing? Used to, uh, we preached against shorts. Well, you know, see, a lot of you like to stay just inside the line. So then you were Bermuda shorts. I don't care where they come from, they're the same thing. And then you, you got a little guilty about that, so you decided you'd try gauchos. Now, the reason you did is you're just trying to find something that you can wear and get by with it. And if you could get by with it, you'd go mix bathing. And, and, and you gals would wear these bikinis where the waistline comes up here to you. I mean, where the bikini comes up here to the waistline. And you show your posterior, and you show most of what you, what's on your, what, most of your body. And the simple truth is, God's people ought to dress like God's people. But you're not going to do it. Don't control your eyes. Well, the house. I, 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 
be considered peculiar. You're getting close. Mine eyes affecteth mine heart. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're on this platform. If you don't, look, if you won't, don't govern your eyes and make a covenant with your eyes, you will not have a clean and pure heart. I don't care if you're on the deacon board of this church. If you don't control your eyes and discipline your eyes, you will not have a pure heart. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are a pastor of a church. I don't care who you are, an evangelist. I don't care who you are. You make a covenant with your eyes. Now, in 1990, why don't you make a covenant with your eyes? Why don't you decide that in 1990, <coughs> you're not going to watch things you shouldn't watch, look at things you shouldn't see? If David, a man after God's own heart, can take a day off and see a woman out his window, and his life is wrecked, your life could be too. If Lot could look at the well-watered plains towards Sodom, and if Lot could say, that's what I want, I want the wealth and riches and luxury of Sodom, and if Lot could go down there and get what his eyes wanted and have his life destroyed, his wife destroyed, his whole, uh, his, uh, uh, his, his children destroyed, uh, two godless nations come from it, then you better not be shopping too much yourself. I love, I love what Dr. Rice said. Mrs. Rice said, Dr. Rice wore the same shoes all the time. Same shoes. I mean, he, same brand, same size, same make, same design, everything. Never wore anything else but those. You know, the old, did you know the old people did that? Hey, I, I'll tell you something. Did you know that used to, you know what a chair used to be for? To sit in. I mean, I hate to break that news to you. Did you know what a coat used to be for? Keep you warm. The college gave Miss Hiles a coat. I saw it in the closet the other day and I shot it. I was worried till I found out she wasn't in it, but I, for a while I got worried. Good night, if I have I, but anyway. Now, look, I'm not against. Like that, you folks loved her and you gave it to her. No, I'm not against that at all. But I'm against you wrecking your life because you can't have the next thing you want. It's time you live within your means. You don't, uh, people come to my office, and I don't know where I'm going tonight. I, it's, it's one of those scrambled egg sermons. But, 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 but folks come to my office having financial troubles. And here's what they say. This is what it's going to take me to live on. Oh, no, 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 no. What you do, you come in with your, with your income and say, this is what I will live on. Did you know that uh, uh, shoes used to be to keep your feet warm? <laughs> did, 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 did you know that, that you don't... I'm going to say this Wednesday night, and I, I hate to say... I hate to get Wednesday night Bible study preached tonight because I'll have to study that between, between now and Wednesday night. But I'm going to say this Wednesday night. Change is a state. Change is not going from one state to another state. Change is a state. And once you start changing, you always change. And if you don't, if, see, if you're not satisfied with what you have, then you won't be satisfied with what you get. Because that's what, you, that's what you'll have when you get it. And so you'll want the next and the next. Now, just quit looking. Hey, you folks that live in $50,000 homes, uh, drive around the neighborhoods where they have $30,000 homes. You folks have $75,000 homes, uh, drive in the neighborhood where they have $50,000 homes. And, and don't let your wife go visit anybody who has a $100,000 home. I mean, it's just like a dog that, 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 that starts uh, uh, killing hens, chickens. You've got to get rid of the dog or the chickens, one or the other. And, and, and there's a way to live. I, I've said this before. Two ways to be, wealth, to be wealthy. 
and rich. One, see, being rich is having exactly what you want. So, be, being rich is either getting what you want or wanting what you have. So I'm rich. I got all I want. All I want. I like what the old southern fellow went and said he went to New York City. He said, I went to New York City and came back and said, thank God I didn't see nothing up there I wanted. I was up there too. I didn't see nothing up there I wanted either. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I just can't feel much at home in this world anymore. Watch your eyes. Be careful about your eyes. Be careful, Eve. It looks good for food. You know what I'm talking about. You ever, did you ever go into a Shoney's restaurant? They don't have their food listed there. They have it pictured. Oh, my soul. <laughs> Waitress came to me the other day in the Shoney's restaurant. said, I take your order. I said, one of each, ma'am. I'll tell you something else, too. Did you ever go to a restaurant? And I don't know where I'm going to stop. I'm trying to think of something sad to say so I can, so can quit. But... Did you ever notice when you go to a restaurant to order, if they bring somebody, if somebody was at the table next to you before you got there, and they bring their food, you say, what is that? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I wish I'd ordered that. Sure you do. Quit looking. Quit looking. Just look, love those scrambled eggs you get and eat them. But, but just quit looking. Quit shopping. Quit looking around. Quit, and, and that means you'll quit coveting. Did you know the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt not covet? I wish somebody someday would come to me and say, Did you hear about so-and-so? He fell into sin. Deep sin. Oh, what? He coveted. That's as much of the commandment as Thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's in the same list. Who are you to say which is the most important? I saw, I coveted, and I took. Why don't you decide to, first place, why don't, you, why don't you get right with God tonight concerning the programs you watch on the TV? Why don't you get right with God tonight concerning the magazines you take and the magazines you read? Did you know that sports, the sporting news has as much more sports in it than Sports Illustrated? And no pictures. I wonder, I wonder why you, and by the way, it doesn't cost as much. Wonder why you buy Sports Illustrated? Huh? Some of you men ought to get right with God. Some of you young men ought to get right with God tonight. You can't. You can't even stay in a motel room. It's got R-rated movies without watching one of the movies. I mean, you haven't got. You haven't got the, the the gumption to keep the channel off HBO when you're in a motel room. And some of you guys think you're going to preach here someday. Why don't you do the ministry a favor and get out? Boy, I, I feel so sorry for some of you women married to a lustful beast. Hold it. I'm not saying it's wrong for a man to have physical appetites. I'm not saying it's wrong for a young man to want his wife. But I am saying it's wrong for every woman to become a sex object. And there's nothing in the world that a, that a, that a woman would appreciate in a man any more than to trust him that his mind is clean and pure. But it won't be clean and pure unless you make a covenant with your eyes. And ladies, the, the things you lust for often are the things that you want. The dress, the house, the furniture. And, and, and why? Because you see them. You see them. I would see me so-and-so. Oh, they have such a lovely place. And you have no idea how, what that makes your husband feel like. Now, let me, let me, let me reason with you a minute, and I'm, I'm going to close. I don't know when, but I promise you I'll close. We're going to have another watch night service. <laughs> but you have no idea how it makes your husband feel. Here, here's a guy that, that's going to college. He goes to school at 8 o'clock in the morning, gets up at 7, goes to school at 8 o'clock in the morning, tries to stay awake during class. Did you ever try to stay awake during one of Dr. Evans' classes? <laughs> it takes a miracle. 
and, and but you try to stay awake in class. And, and, and here's your husband now. And then he he goes to work as soon as he gets off from school. And he, he works till midnight, gets home one one thirty in the morning maybe. He's got to wake up to study sometime between one thirty and, and seven o'clock when he leaves. And he's doing the best he can to put some kind of roof over your head and some kind of clothes on your body. Can you imagine how he feels when he's giving all he can? And you talk about what somebody else has that you'd like to have? Why don't you walk over to him? Why don't you look up and you say, you're a great guy and I admire you. You got what it takes. You got a jewel there, ladies, and don't know it. But I won't quit wanting. Well, I'm going to quit looking back. And some of you students, the backward look tonight. And some of you folks just got saved. You're looking back to the old. Don't look back. Just keep on going. Just keep on going. Make a covenant with your eyes. My eye hath affected my heart. Now, let me ask you a question. What kind of shape are your eyes in tonight? What kind of shape are your eyes in tonight? You know what you watched on the box this week. I don't, but you do. You know what you read this week. You know, you young men, you know what magazine you put between the covers of a telephone directory this week. You know what magazine is down at the bottom of your little briefcase. You know what it is. You know what part of that Sears Roebuck catalog that you looked at is something you can't wear. You know what it is. You know what, and, and you ladies know. If, if, if you could, you'd bankrupt your husband. Now, you know what it is. Why don't you get your eyes right with God tonight? Mine eyes affecteth mine heart. Shall we stand? The choir will sing. You obey him.